Welcome back to the Worthy Woman podcast with Aston Simmons. And today I have a beautiful guest, uh, the amazing Jade. Jade is a motherhood coach helping mums find themselves again through their journey of motherhood, something we can all relate to. I was just saying that I definitely had a journey to finding myself again through motherhood and just recreating myself. Who am I? What am I about? So I'm super excited to have this conversation. And um, I also love that Jade is really, um, really passionate about really changing this narrative of just a mum. And who has said that before? I mean, I think we're all putting our hands up going, I have two, I'm just a mum. I mean, that couldn't be further from the truth. We were just literally speaking um, off air before that just like the job of motherhood is enormous and there is nothing just about it. So we're going to be diving deep into this ginormous journey of motherhood. Um, we're going to be talking about mum guilt, um, and, you know, how do we overcome that? How do we find ourselves in motherhood? And also diving into, you know, why we need to take better care of ourselves so that we can be better mums, because that's so important. And I was just saying that I know for me, I am a much better mum when I look after myself. So lots of juice we're going to talk about today. Um, really excited for this chat. But before we dive in, I just want to hand you over to the beautiful Jade so she can let us know all about her and the amazing, um, the amazing work she does and her journey. And then we'll dive in. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be on the podcast. So thank you so much for having me. I think you did a wonderful job of kind of summing me up, but it's so hard. And I always say this, it's so hard to sum ourselves up into like a brief little description because we're all so like multifaceted and there's so many different things about ourselves that we could usually share. But I guess the main thing for the context of this podcast is that I am a motherhood mindset expert. And so I really help my clients come back to themselves through that journey of motherhood and make it an experience that they they can fall in love with again, so that the motherhood part of it is an aspect of their journey that they love, but that they also see that there are other parts of their journey that encompass who they are as well. And I'm so passionate about that. I think a lot of that exhaustion from motherhood comes when we're really not nourishing ourselves or giving ourselves that time. And so being really clear in your identity and who you are outside of motherhood is really going to fill up that cup and just prevent that, that overwhelm, that exhaustion, that burnout. And I'm just so, so passionate about it. I think I lost my identity prior to motherhood. And so coming into motherhood with my beautiful girl, who's only one, um, just turned one recently, I didn't want to make that same mistake again and really lose myself as I had before she came along. So I really set myself up with some good mindset practices and doing a, a lot of self-development work and discovery work so that I knew who I was and I wasn't going to lose myself. So I'm so passionate about sharing that with, with other women now. So oh, yeah, that's me that. in a nutshell. I absolutely love that. And I can totally, I just loved how you described that it's just another identity because we get to create it. Like, I think sometimes we think motherhood's happened to us and then like these parts of ourselves are just gone. And I know I definitely experienced a bit of like a death and a rebirth when I became a mum, and it, there was parts of me that were evolving and it was hard to let go of those parts and to trust that they would evolve into something more and that there would be more of me on the other side. Um, but, you know, I'm five years into this journey and now, and I know that the more you work on yourself, like you said, the more you actually look, the more you do the self-development, you make those um, identity shifts and and you work on yourself, the more you find um, about yourself. And there's so much more, like we're so limitless. There's the possibilities are endless, but I understand that when you are in that motherhood initially, it can feel like, oh, this is me, you know, um, this is what I'm doing now, changing bums, wiping noses, packing lunches, making dinner. And that is definitely part of it. And I loved how you said that, yeah, there's that part of it. And then there's also this other side. So, um, so let's dive into that, like, you know, finding yourself in motherhood. How did you kind of find yourself in motherhood? Did you start with just recreating this identity so that you knew that there was another side of you? Talk talk to me about it. 
I think for myself, I had a really clear identity before going into motherhood, which was really fortunate for myself. And a lot of that came off the back of getting out of a previously very violent domestic relationship that I actually had to flee Western Australia to get away from. So I had lost myself a lot in that relationship and it very nearly cost me my life. So when I came out of that, I was like, I need to be really clear about who I am and what I want my life. And so I just started diving really deep into who I actually was at my core. What were my values? Who was I? What was important to me in the context of my life and what I wanted so that I wasn't tying myself to other people or things. I was Mm. really clear on me as an individual. And that's what I really encourage with my clients is getting really clear on who are you? What is it that you value? Aside from being a mother, because that is a part of you. And I don't want to disregard that or not give that importance because it is important to us as mums. But who are you aside from that? And so for me, when Sophia was born, I was like, well, I know who I am. I know who I am at my core and I'm not going to let that just shift away because I now have this beautiful little baby. I'm happy to give to her, but I also need to give to myself. And I think understanding that our identity does shift and change and it is a very, can be a very fluid thing depending on the labels we give ourselves. I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't tied to any one label or aspect of my identity. That way, when it changed, it wasn't like I had to really mourn the loss of that label or that identity. I could morph it into something beautiful that was going to serve me better in the present. And that's what we sort of unpack when I do my coaching with clients. What are we morphing into? That way it doesn't have to feel like such a process of grief because it's okay to grieve the loss of some things that can't or won't be the same, but you don't have to sit in that grief forever. hundred percent. I really agree with that. And wow, just listening to your story, I was like, that is so powerful what you've been through and how you've turned it around. And I really loved, like, so I just want to honor your story and your journey first, because I was really moved by it. Um, And secondly, what came through was like, I loved how you were saying to not be attached, because I think that's the key to the identity or to, I am only valuable because of this person. I know some people get so attached to that they're a mum and then They don't know who they are outside their kids. And we know our kids are going to grow up. Um, I mean, I see this in relationships all the time where mums get over-invested in their kids or the the husband or dad gets over-invested in his work and then they lose each other because they've, they've made their identity, their work or their kids. So we all do this at different times. Even if you're not a mum, you are doing this where you like over identify with your work or whatever. And I know we do it because we think that our value is in those things. You know, we get a pat on the back or we get something, it meets a need. So then we think, oh, you know, I just keep on doing that because that's the only way I get validation or that's the only way I get love um, or that's the only way I feel good enough if I'm meeting that need or I'm matching that identity. And then that's when we're so devastated when it's taken away because we're like, oh, I'm not enough or I'm not loved without it. But you're so right. It's it's that core thing within you. They're like qualities of you, I would almost say. That's how I would describe it. I loved how you said like values, values or qualities that you embody that make you who you are. And nobody can take that away from you. And that's not attached to anything or anyone. That's literally coming through you which is really, really powerful. So I loved that you you decided to do that, that you made a decision to go, yes, I'm becoming a mum, but these are my values. This is what makes me who I am. And even with having a child, those values are still important to me. 
So such a powerful way to still be able to hold on to those parts of yourself because they're qualities. So whether your body changes or you change what you're doing for work or whatever, you still have those qualities. So I really love that. That's really, really powerful. Um, I I can really relate to that. And so, you know, going through motherhood and, and bringing that into your journey of motherhood, that's obviously been really helpful. Um did you find that that made it easier for you to do some things for yourself? You know, I, I know we talked about like, you know, looking after yourself makes you a better mum. Did it make it a little bit easier having those values? It did because I was really aware of what it was that filled up my cup because that's essentially forming part of my identity. So for me, I've I've been an active person for I won't say my whole life because there was a time when I was a bookworm and I wouldn't get up till, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, but I have been a very active person. And so after I had my daughter, we were in the hospital for 10 days because we had some complications with the birth. But as soon as we were home, I was like, I need to exercise. I need to get out into the sun. I need to walk my dogs and be around my dog because I had a Rottweiler then. He's sadly passed now, but you know, he was a big part of my life too, before my daughter. So I made sure I started incorporating some of those things that made me who I was before. So that when I came home to my daughter, she got the best version of me. I had already filled up my cup. So I would be out walking at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'd go for an hour, come home, and then I could spend from eight o'clock until forever pretty much with her and still feel like she's getting the best version of me because I've at least done one thing for myself today that shows me that I'm still me aside from her because we're not two we're not one identity we're two separate Mm, people and I really wanted her to have that experience as well because I don't want her to ever feel like she's tied to me. I want her to know that she's an entire person by herself and she can be expressive and creative and be whoever she wants to be. And that's not dictated by my identity. Mm, I love that. I have full goosebumps because I have a daughter as well. And I'm all for this generational healing and just breaking those patterns. And that was a big turning point for me, having my daughter, realizing like, I don't want her to think that she doesn't deserve her own time. I don't want her to think that she doesn't, isn't worthy of giving herself what she needs. And I knew that if I didn't make changes, she was just going to model what I was doing, you know, which was doing everything for everyone, putting myself last, which I know so, so many women do because they think, you know, I'll get to myself when everything's done. But this is the thing with motherhood. It's never done. So it's like, put yourself first now. And, you know, I get that it might seem difficult for some women in the beginning, if you haven't done what Jade did and kind of recreated your identity, because it was hard for me, but I did have to recreate my identity to the mum who looks after herself. Because when I look after myself, then I'm there, I'm a better mum for my children. And, you know, for me, it was little mantras. Like, I love that you went out in the sun. I call it like soul nourishment what's filling up your cup, what's nourishing your soul. For me, it is being out in the sun. So I had to create these mantras like sun's out, I'm out, or um, I need to rest now so that I can get everything done instead of I'll rest when everything's done. You know, I needed to make those little switches, which are tiny, but were really powerful for me to change my actions. But I had to change my belief first of what I thought about my role as a mum so that I could change my actions. And and I know that's why you work with mindset as well, because it really does start with all the stories that we're telling. It really yeah, a hundred percent. Like, I think there's a lot of power in how you introduce yourself and how somebody introduces themselves to me often gives me a clue on what's going on for them and what they see themselves as. So I think that, you know, you mentioned before about a lot of people forming identity with their work or their children. And you think about the way most people introduce themselves is like, hi, I'm Jade and I'm a mindset coach. That's an identity. Hi, I'm Jade and I'm a mom. That's an identity. And that's all really like well and good. And you don't have to shed 
that as an identity, but it's about how do those labels actually incorporate into the person that you are. So what labels do you want to associate with yourself and what identities do you want to have that actually form who you are as a person? And I just think it's so, so powerful to unpack that Mm. and get so clear because I know what it's like to get lost in that and not know who you are. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping mums through it because that feeling of who am I aside from this, and I remember thinking that in my DV relationship of, who am I aside from this broken down, beaten partner? And so going into motherhood, I wanted to make sure that I never had to say to myself, who am I aside from just a mom? I wanted to be, who am I aside from a mom? Because I value that part of my identity as well as all these other parts. Mm. Oh, full goosebumps. And truly, our identity is everything. And, you know, in a lot of the work I do with couples and with women, it's the same thing. You have to learn about your identity because you'll be listening and you might be thinking, oh, what do you mean identity? Everybody has an identity. Literally, like you said, whatever you say after I am is your identity. So, you know, it might be, I am just a mom or I am a people pleaser or I am an, a, a perfectionist or um, I hear a lot, I am not affectionate or I am not, um, you know, whatever it is, but you were doing this daily to ourselves. And what I realized when I became a mom, like you touched on, I was doing it to my kids too. So whenever you speak, I am, or you are, and then whatever, you're literally speaking over somebody, their identity. And that's that, that is the power, you know, that we have as, as mums and as parents, which is sometimes feels like a massive responsibility to like, censor every word that comes out of your mouth but for me I just keep in mind the power of your identity and the power it has to shape you into who you are and so like you I really try and bring conscious awareness to what am I speaking over myself and then what am I speaking over my kids and is it in alignment with our values is it in alignment with what they want And is it in alignment with what what I want to experience for myself when I'm speaking over myself? So I feel like that's, it's huge, the identity piece. It's, we're literally wired as human beings, every single one of us to meet that need of our identity. We're literally wired. And this is how I can understand how people are smokers. Totally get it. Like people go, why, why are they smoking? It's part of their identity. When you say, I am a smoker, that's who you are. And you, your brain is like, okay, that's who I am. This is what we do. Like you, it, your brain won't argue with you, whatever you tell it to do, it'll do and you'll become. So it just, yeah, it's, it, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. I can't believe we're not taught this kind of stuff at school because it's, it's like life, life changing. It's incredible. Yeah. I really think that, you know, we spend so much time in school learning the English language, but we don't actually spend any time realizing how powerful our words actually are. I mean, words cast a spell, right? That's why they call it spelling because it's literally casting a spell. And I am a, a hypnotherapist. That's part of one of the modalities that I use. And I'm very conscious of the language that I use because I'm, I understand how we do or hypnotize ourselves sometimes into believing our stories or our identity and it's so powerful to re-hypnotize yourself into mm-hmm. what actually serves you 100 percent, and we 100 percent have the power to do that it's it's amazing you know yes we can create problems and things that we don't want but we can also learn from them like you did and then create what we do want which is just so powerful I love that I absolutely love that um I could literally talk about identity forever, but I really want to um, talk about um, mum guilt as well because it's something that really does come up a lot. Um, And I know for myself, I had to go on a massive journey to heal from this and to be okay. Like I could now drop my kids at daycare on their daycare day and be 100% okay with doing what I need to do. I can go and date my husband and not feel guilty. But I do remember a time where it was difficult for me to leave my kids with at daycare or with dad or, you know, and I know a lot of women struggle with this. And I know a lot of women have like some anxiety around 
leaving their kids with someone else other than them. So, um, you know, that really adds on top of the guilt as well. Yeah. And I have been told that my opinion on mum guilt is semi-controversial. Oh, and great. the I reason, yeah, <laughs> we're going to go there. So the reason that I get told that is because I don't actually believe in mum guilt. And I know that that's probably like, oh, really? But I felt it and I've experienced it. And I challenge that with people because I don't actually think it's mum guilt specifically. Mm. I think it's just guilt. And it comes from pedestaling our children and making everything about them. So it's not so much that you feel mum guilt because you're the mum. It's actually that you just feel guilt about not being there for your children. And I think that that in itself can be really powerful because when you realize that you're pedestaling your children and you think about the act of pedestaling someone, it literally means that somebody has to be above you. You're mm. below them. They're, they're looking down on you. And do you want your kids to be doing that? For me personally, I want my daughter, yes, I have to have some authority as her mom to guide her through some certain things and some dangers and all those sorts of things. But I'm not better than her or above Mm -hmm. her I'm her equal and when you start shifting that and realizing that we are all just humans on this human experience and we're all equals you realize it's not mum guilt I'm feeling it is just a guilt and where does that guilt actually come from because somewhere along the line you decided that you were not worthy of taking time for yourself And that's what it really comes back to at its core. And there are different beliefs that come up around guilt and the reason that they're there. But that's the one I hear most often is Mm. I'm not worthy or they are more worthy than me. Yeah, I I, I can relate 100%. And truly what helped me make the shift was realizing that, that I didn't realize that I didn't think I was worthy of my own time. Like it 100% came back to me. I shared this in an article I wrote um, for Mamma Mia recently and we were just talking about it. And that was the realization that I had that this is not about my kids. This is about me not meeting my needs, me not thinking I'm worthy of having what I want or worthy of my own time or my own love or, you know, it definitely came back to that. And the only way I could shift it was to take responsibility that, like I said in the article, that I'm the only one that can put me first. That is my job. So I was waiting for someone else, my husband, my kids or someone, it was never going to happen. And I'm so glad that I finally realized that. And I I just hope that women are listening to this and they're waking up and realizing, yes, I get to put myself first because you 100% do. And when you put yourself first, I'm living proof, Jade's proof, all these women making this shift is that you're a better mum. Like you are a better mum. Like I don't feel guilt anymore. And I'm my kids feel that difference. You know, the way I interact with them now, because there isn't that guilt, they notice it. You know, they celebrate me when I'm doing stuff for myself. I celebrate them when they do stuff for them. And I love what you shared because I feel the same that my kids are here to teach me as much as I'm here to teach them. And like, seriously, sometimes I feel like they know more than me um, because they're just (laughs) more connected to the universe and their intuition. And they're not so fixed mindset. You know, I really, I've worked on having a growth mindset, but they naturally have a growth mindset at these young ages. Um, And so I'm, I a hundred percent agree that I, I really see them as my spiritual, um, like as a spiritual assignment, our relationship and that we're teaching each other. And, you know, I definitely don't think I'm better than them. You know, half the time I'm like, I can't believe I'm a mum. Like, you know, how do I have a five-year-old? How do I have a three-year-old? You know, because I still feel like I'm evolving myself, but I actually love that. I want my kids to see that I'm imperfectly still evolving as a person as well, because you know, I think some of this mum guilt actually comes from thinking they need to be this perfect mum, which is not possible. It's unattainable, unattainable, it's unachievable, it's not even real. And and I'm sure social media has a lot to do with that, that, 
you know, making us think that the mum that we are isn't good enough. Yeah. And I mean, as kids, we're always watching, right? So mum guilt for us currently in our stages of life is most likely learned from watching our mother go through the same thing and her wanting to do all of these things for us. I know personally, I love my mum, but she was very self-sacrificing for us. And so I did have this perception of a what for a while that if I'm not sacrificing myself for the happiness of others or for the happiness of my daughter, then I must not be doing the job right because my mum did a fantastic job in being a mum. She was the she is still the best mum in my eyes. So for me, it was like if I'm self-sacrificing and I'm doing things to make other people happy, then I'm doing a good job just like my mum. So when I think about what sort of example I want for my daughter to have, I want her to look at me and go, mum knew that she was worthy of her own time. And she knew that by giving that to herself, she was able to give more to me and teach me how to give to myself. That's the example that I want to set. And I didn't learn that until much later on in life than I would have liked But I'm grateful that my mum did set that example so that I had something to learn from. I just don't want to repeat that mistake. Yeah, I 100% can relate to that. And honestly, I think women everywhere, like especially our generation, um, really get that because it was a generational norm that women were selfless and self-sacrificing. And I, I saw a lot of that. I'm sure lots of women saw that. And so... I do think that's why, like you said, we come come into motherhood sometimes thinking, you know, and also we remember it as a child. I remember thinking, oh, like none of the women that were mums when I was young, they they didn't look stressed. They didn't look tired. They didn't look overwhelmed. They didn't look burnt out. They just did it with ease. I mean, it's a different life. Like life has changed. Life has got busier. But I had to do a lot of actually work and I did some hypnotherapy to go back to that time and realize they were stressed. They were overwhelmed. I had remembered that completely, you know, not true to what it actually was. I saw it as better than it was as a child. Um, And then that really freed me to realize, of course, they were stressed. Of course, they still were overwhelmed. And, you know, and a lot of those women then ended up to be very resentful in later years, you know, because they didn't get that time back as we're all promised, you know, we're all promised like work, give it all, serve, like sacrifice. And then one day you will rest. One day you will retire. One day you can travel around Australia or do what your dreams are. But the thing is for not for some people that one day doesn't come because you've had years and years and years of that self-sacrificing. You've built that identity. You've built that pattern and that habit. And then it's not just going to change overnight just because you've retired or whatever it is. And, and I feel like a lot of women started to realize that when they were, you know, in their older years, kind of realizing, you know what, there was a lot of things I wanted to do that I didn't do for myself because I chose to do these things for my kids. And, you know, that's great, but they're then at this point of like, am I going to have regrets because I didn't do those things that were important to me? And I know like you, it was just really important to me to to not have those regrets. And I never wanted my kids to um, feel like they were the my excuse not to live my life or follow my dreams or I, I really have used them as a reason I to flip that script that like, It's not, I can't do this because I've got kids or I can't work on myself because I'm a mom or I can't invest in myself because I'm a mom. For me, I had to be like, I, because I'm a mom, I have to invest in myself because I'm a mom. I have to look after myself. My kids were my reason to actually continue to do the work on me. Yeah. And I think that pattern of self-sacrificing is such a dangerous one to get into and For me, I notice it a lot in my mom and I love her so dearly. I am not bagging her or trashing her in any way because like I said, she's the best mom. But even so recently as this week, I had gastro on Tuesday. It's now Friday. And my mom popped around um, randomly to give me some lettuce out of her garden. And she's, she's like, oh, are you not well? 
And I'm like, no, she's like, where's Sophia? I'm like, put her into daycare for an extra day. It's okay. And she's like, oh, I wish I could stay and I want to help you. And I wish I could look after her. And I could see this pain on her face that she couldn't stay and help me. But she also didn't realize like she couldn't stay and help me because that day is actually her cancer treatment day. And for her, she would still rather look after me and help me. And I'm like, please, please go and take care of yourself. Please go and do that for me because I need you to be well so that you can be for me. I don't want you to self-sacrifice anymore. I want you to put yourself first because nobody else is going to do that for you. I can't go and get your treatment for you. I can't put you first. You have to do that. And I I cringe at the thought of women falling into this trap because there is only one you. And if you don't look after yourself and you continue to self-sacrifice, it says it all in the name. It is a sacrifice. You are hurting yourself and sacrificing yourself for someone else. And, you know, as, as lovely and as kind as that thought might feel, it is so much kinder to yourself and everybody around you if you're looking after you and showing up as the best version of yourself. It's actually the greatest gift that you can give another human is giving them the fullest version of you. Mm, My God, I've got all the feels. I've got tears in my eyes. I'm like, oh, I just can feel everything you're saying and I can really relate to it. And it's, it's just a really common story and a common theme that we do see in like our parents' generation. And it breaks my heart too, because I remember having that moment of like, not thinking I was valuable unless I was helping other people. And you really are, like you said, sacrificing yourself. I had to get real with myself that I was neglecting myself. I was abandoning my own soul. And like, would I say to somebody else, you mean nothing unless you're serving other people or, you know, don't like put yourself last because, you know, the only way that I'm going to value you is if you do everything for everybody else. I was like, I would never say that to anybody else. It would like break my heart to think that someone in my life was doing that, you know, really neglecting and abandoning themselves, thinking that they don't matter, that they don't matter, that they're not worthy. Um, And that's exactly what I felt when you were sharing that story. And it's, it, is a story that we do hear a lot, especially from women. And it does catch up with us. Like literally the body keeps the score. Like we can justify what we're doing all we like, but it does have an impact on our bodies and how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our life. And I love what you said, that it is the greatest gift that we can truly give our loved ones is to look after ourselves because that then gives them permission to do the same. And that's how we change this narrative one by one. We all put ourselves first. We celebrate each other for it. And then we teach our daughters how to do the same. And then we completely, we we change those generational patterns, which, you know, really need so much healing in the feminine line. Um, it's, it's so powerful. Wow. I just, I feel like you've shared so much gold with us and so much of your heart. And I just, I'm so grateful and I I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to share with us um, before we wrap up? I just really, I think I want to stress to the listeners that if you work on yourself, like you said, that would be generational change. Mm. So anything that you do for yourself and any inner work that you do is going to ripple out and have a bigger effect. And I hear sometimes the resistance from people to invest in themselves, whether that's time or money, but they don't realise the investment is paying off tenfold. You're not just helping yourself, you're also helping everybody around you. So have a think about what it is that you want to do and what you want to do for yourself. Mm. What are you going to invest in yourself? What time, what course, what coach, what thing that's going to help you and help everybody around you in that ripple effect? Because you are so, so worthy of that. And everybody else is worthy of the best version of you too. So Celebrate yourself, love yourself and do those things that are going to 
gift everybody that version of you. I think that's what I want to stress to mums and everyone. I love that. And I really, I just echo that message and I just feel it so deeply as well. Um, I've absolutely loved this chat. So nourishing, so powerful. And um, yeah, I just fully agree. There is a ripple effect that is created. Like it touches everything. It starts with you and it touches everything. You know, it's, it's so much bigger than just you always, absolutely always. So definitely, I hope that this um, chat inspires you to put yourself first, invest in yourself, remember your worth and to definitely stop sacrificing yourself. Let that, you know, that's something we need to leave behind in 2023, leave behind sacrificing ourselves. Um, I don't want to see any women doing that. I want to see us rising into our power, owning who we are, like really standing in our worth. Um, I think the world really needs that right now. So let's make a commitment, all of us to do that. I'm definitely in for that. Um, And if you want to know more about Jade and the amazing work she's doing, I'm going to put all the links in the comments so you can check it all out and definitely go and head to her Instagram. I'll put all the links there. She says, shares some really powerful um, perspectives on motherhood and how to shift that identity. So definitely go and check it out and I will see you guys next time.